Hey guys, with another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today's the 19th of February, 2016, and uh, we actually got a pretty packed show for you. Plus, we got to get uh, rolling to bed here because we have to be up at the butt crack of dawn to travel out to Columbus for BlizzCon uh, in about, uh, well, we'll be on the road in nine hours from this taping. So, uh, let's plow on through shall we uh we got some kit releases domestically we have a bunch of kit releases internationally and we also have some new kit announcements so um what we'll tease one thing real quick got some box art that was done up uh for mobius here this obviously showing the next variation of the 1961 pontiac that mobius is currently doing now this will come after the uh, uh what am i trying to think of the uh Street Catalina, the uh, Catalina Super Duty. This will be the third variation of the Mobius Pontiacs. Uh, they're thinking uh, summertime, some point. And, uh, so, you know, there's nothing definitive on it. The box art is done, so that's a definitely a step in the right direction, of course. But there's nothing, you know, it's not on the water. It's not going to be out in the next couple of months. They're uh, talking summertime uh and that of course is a model king uh limited edition version not an actual mobius kit in the distribution sense of things um so on the kit announcement front we have april a couple of things added to the april uh releases from hasagawa and they are the 1988 mercedes-benz uh sauber c9 kit and the 1987 jaguar xjr uh 8 Le Mans car. Um, both those 124 scale. Um, a couple of people have just picked some of those old uh, kits up, actually. Uh, this The Jaguar, I believe, is supposed to be the silk cut car, but because, of course, we have to save ourselves from the children, uh, there will be no tobacco sponsorship, uh, more than likely, on the decals. There certainly is not any on the box art that has been developed for it. So, more than likely, you will have to source the uh, evil tobacco sponsorship uh, on your own. And uh, more than likely, Shunko or somebody else will do a set of decals the month after in, like, you know, uh, um, May or June, if not April itself. Uh, and we also got the March spot runs uh, from Fujimi. Yeah, I seem a little distracted. I've got, like, three cats running, and somebody has something that sounded like it was metal or something, but, nah, yeah, well. Uh, three more uh, F1 car reissues. They are the 120, all 120th scale, the Ferrari F1 8788C. You'll be able to build that either as the 87 or the 88. Uh, the 1992 Williams FW 14B and the Ferrari 126CK, which ran in 1981. Um, I know all three, of, in addition to the Ferrari being buildable in either the 87 or the 88, uh, the Williams and the Ferrari are going to be... Uh, like multiple race liveries, much like the February kits are going to be, where you, you could build them with like two or three different Grand Prix uh, variations. Uh, on the 124 scale side of things, uh, the next easy kit that's going to be coming out is the uh, Mini Cooper S in the uh, Kuminon version. Go uh, Google Kuminon. That would be K-U-M-A-M-O-N. And you'll see uh, it is a panda-like uh, anime character, and for some reason, it was involved in the 100th anniversary of Mini. Uh, granted, the, <laughs> the 100th anniversary of Mini, rather ironic, being it was owned by BMW and not, you know, Mini or any of the subsequent companies that owned that nameplate afterwards. Uh, but for some reason, it was tied in, and they made sort of a panda-ish looking Mini Cooper. The only photos I found of it online, now granted I haven't really looked that hard, are convertibles, and the uh, Fujimi kit is not a convertible, so it'll be interesting to see if they're just planning to slap the decals on a hard top. Um, I don't think this... Uh, uh, the easy kits, again, not snap die kits. They're molded in color, designed not to have to be painted, and they have deke and, and mylar, like, wheels of fire stickers for everything else. Uh, I don't think they're going to cut the top off just for this, basically, a very, very basic uh, quick build kit. So... Maybe there were some done as hardtops. Again, I didn't didn't they they were not the first thing to come up on Google Image Search when you try to find a Mini Cooper S Kuminon. Uh, so whatever. 
Uh, also going to be reissuing the Lamborghini Diablo, and everybody like, well, they just uh, didn't they just do that? And well, this is going to be the uh, for, like first gen Diablo, the one they 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 did a couple months ago was the uh, 1999 model year Super Veloc. This will be the regular Diablo. Uh, it'll be buildable as a regular Diablo or as uh, the four wheel drive, uh, which is really all wheel drive, but it was considered to be four wheel drive uh, Black Star. Uh, I think the Black Star is just a you know tuning house sort of kind of thing uh fuji did a number of black star kits throughout the 90s and most of them all seemed to be just cars that were painted black uh that were otherwise not really all that distinguishable from the other uh variants of those kits uh there's like a black star f40 there was a black star uh, mercedes um it is what it is in that sense of being one of those just weird variations that uh, fuji does but the thing about this kit uh is that the doors are actually hinged. Uh, they give you a um, like metal wire to stick in there to hinge them. Uh, so this has opening and closing doors. It's still a very basic curbside with just a like a top engine. Uh, I realize I haven't. Re I actually haven't not put on YouTube the video I made about the Super Veloc along with all the other kits I got the other day. So I can't say it was just like the other one because you haven't seen that yet. But there's just a very basic top of the engine piece uh, that fits into a molded engine bay, much like the, uh, some of their other Lamborghini kits. Uh, so it's not full detail by any stretch of the imagination. However, you know, again, the Diablos that Fujimi did, while basic, uh, tend to be more uh, fidelity-wise and just shape-wise correct than the SE kit that AMT Ertl did. Uh, the last one is going to be a reissue, finally, of the uh, Mitsua Art Dump Truck. Um, it doesn't say whether it's going to be the Fuso or the Super Dolphin, so maybe they're going to include the parts for everything. Uh, but this is the really garish Japanese uh, truck with all the chrome and all the, uh, what we call here in the United States, chicken lights uh, and everything else like that. All of this is just the... It's Japanese art uh, rolling down the road in the form of a dump truck, basically. Uh, very colorful decals, very very much chrome, very much lights. Of course, not, not lights don't work, but you know what I'm talking about in the sense of a lot of uh, a lot of marker lights, a lot of accent lights. Uh, this was the third variation of the kits when the Mitsuo actually did them. You know, we've gone through this a thousand times. I don't want to go, you know, spend a whole lot of time on it, but, you know, they did the tractor, then they did the dump truck, then they did the car haulers, and then the car haulers just being a trailer attached to the tractor part, and then they made a this art series out of the dump trucks. Uh, they did art series out of both of them, both the Mitsubishi and the uh, Hino. So whether or not it's going to be one or the other, or just, like I said, all of the parts in the box other than the car hauler parts, uh, because some of the art truck parts have been in the car hauler and the and just the regular tractor, so uh, it's just basically ungating a few things or just running a few more mold inserts through whatever they need to do to make the actual uh, kit complete. But uh, we'll keep you up to date if that sort of thing interests you uh, as far as which one of the trucks it's going to be. But I, I think because it just says art dump truck, uh, it may just be everything in a box uh, in that sense and. Uh, you can build it either as a Mitsubishi or the Hino, but we'll find out for sure. Now, on the kit release side of things here, we've got uh, two kits uh, that Ravel was doing for the month of February, and they are the Porsche 914-6. Uh, this kit, These kits are out, at least in the preferred retailer uh, side of things. Uh, your hobby shop may vary for the next couple of weeks. But they should all be uh, in stock everywhere by the end of the month. These pictures uh, blatantly were stolen off of eBay because uh, I will not see my vendor guy that I normally check on check in on Kiss until tomorrow at the show, and by then the sh this video needed to already be out. Uh, so uh, two in one. This is basically the two kits that uh, Ravel did back in the day, combined into one box. You could obviously build the stock. You could build the road racer. Um, you know, the kit has its its issues in being somewhat fiddly because of the fact that uh, the front windshield is a separate piece uh, so that, that uh, Road Racer could have the very low windscreen. So, you know, that it has those problems. But if you know anything about this kit, if you've built models at all or you know anybody who has, they can tip you in on, on the exact issues with this kit because it's not new. There's nothing about this that's new. This kit is, what, 30 years old at this point? Uh, but it hasn't been around for quite a while, so it's not a not an unwelcome uh, reissue by any stretch. 
And then the quote unquote new kit as part of the, the uh, first quarter releases is this, the 1966 Chevy fleet side pickup. Uh, make sure if you're, you know, trying to find this on eBay, you do the Chevy and not Chevrolet because uh, that, you know, does give you different results on eBay, as I found out when I was trying to figure out if this kit was out or not. I really don't know what about this uh, is different from the 64 or the 65 for that matter. I mean, obviously 65 was a uh, step side, but I don't know what, you know, what exactly about this makes it a 66 in the sense of uh, new parts, change parts, if it's just decals or what. I am planning to pick one up tomorrow if I can find one, so I'll let you know. But going into it, I don't know what about it is exactly a 66. They all pretty much look the same to me. So uh, I, I, you know, <laughs> shame on me for not knowing my uh, mid-60s Chevy pickup trucks, but... Uh, you know, I know, I know that this is the, the last of the years that they could make out of that mold without having to do anything to it. So, you know, no harm, no foul and Revell for getting all the money they can out of it, considering how old the 64 is. I mean, I'm just, it's right over there, uh, in my, my stash and that's like a mid nineties Revell box. So, I mean, we're talking again, something that's old enough to drive or well, maybe old enough to drink at this point. Um, so overseas, we've got quite a few kits, uh, coming out of different places. And uh, a couple of these are actually legitimately new. Um, first we're going to start off over here. This is sort of not a new kit per se, but this is the Platts. Uh, I know everything is in, is in, <laughs> in Japanese on this, but this is the Nissan S14 Silvia, uh, D1 Grand Prix, which is a drift series in Japan, Pacific racing team, uh, girls Panzer uh, kit. Um, what this is, is the Fujimi kit, at least I believe it's the Fujimi kit. The instructions look identical to the Fujimi kit, and the kit itself looks identical to the Fujimi kit, so I'm assuming it's the Fujimi kit, uh, with a new set of decals, uh, basically co-branded by Platts, uh, sort of a little private labeling, if you will. Um, the details of this kit that are different, I suppose, than the other ones is there are photo watch like winglets for the wing that it goes on the back of here. Of course, you have all the big fancy graphics uh, for the car itself. You sort of see the Fujimi tie in because Fujimi's got that Pacific Racing McLaren 12C coming out, and then this is Pacific Racing, and it's a Fujimi kit. And you, you can see the licensing tie in and why, and why I believe it's a Fujimi kit. Um, but, you know, beyond that, it's nothing really all that out of the ordinary from the existing uh, S14 Silvias that Fujimi had done in the past. Just a, uh, you know, threw a wing on it. I'm not even, I don't believe there are actually any new parts to this. I believe this is, all of these uh, pieces were available previously in various issues. Uh, maybe the photo etch winglets uh, for the end of the wings are new. I don't, I, I didn't go through every single Silvia uh, that Fujimi makes to look at them all. But I'm just throwing it out there because, uh, you know, going into this, we didn't know who made the kit, if it was going to be a brand new tooling or something like that. Didn't think it was going to be, but, you know, just in case. And since we're talking about Fujimi, their uh, new slash reissue, uh, one of the many they're doing this month, this is the uh, only one that's out so far, is the Volkswagen Golf Gen 3 uh, CLGL. I thought that there were two different sets of wheels to this kit, but it turns out that uh, once you get one set of wheels and for the cl which is the red car in the background you just paint the middle of the wheel insert uh black and then paint the bumpers gray to make it the base trim model i have not seen looking through the instructions and granted i just sort of glanced through them uh that there are any differences any parts differences between the two between the cl and the gl the cl just has different paint call outs to make it the el cheapo base model and the, the gl is you know a little more well appointed um, different seat coloring, different dashboard coloring. Uh, I believe there's GL decals. The CL didn't have any nameplates because it was so cheap it didn't come with any. Uh, it does come with left-hand and right-hand drive, so you can build it either way. It comes with an engine tray, I'll call, uh, generously call. Basically, it's uh, just an engraved piece that actually screws to the body from the underside, and then you have to cut the hood off if you want to display the engine. So it doesn't have an engine exactly, but if you really want to go that you know extra part, you can display what they give you. 
Uh, the other Fujimi kit that came out this week, and this is sort of more new than not, is the 1977 Lotus Esprit S1. Now, this is the James Bond spy sub with a car ch uh, chassis underneath it, basically, for all intents and purposes. Um, it doesn't look all that half bad. Uh, the only thing I can't tell looking at images of the kit basically still packaged is what the wheels look like compared to the uh, drawing on the box. They are they have the requisite number of spokes, but how deep they are in the dish of them, so to as it were, that dish dough. Uh, you know, and whether or not that's correct, I couldn't tell you just by glancing at it. Um, the chassis is, you know, basically all engraved one piece. The engine, bottom of the engine is engraved to the chassis plate. This is a curbside. There are no en other engine details to it. The chassis itself actually has quite a few parts to it. Obviously, they were tooling the chassis plate up completely separately from the submarine because the submarine just has a flat panel to the bottom of it. Uh, so they, you know, threw a couple extra bucks at that, I guess, and you do get probably, you know, more parts to it than you would a normal uh, Fujimi curbside per se. Uh, but it's a cool kit. Uh, it's the first time that this specific uh, car has been available. The monogram kit was, uh, a, I believe, a second-gen uh, Esprit. This is the first time the first-gen Esprit has been available in 124 scale, <clears throat> other than some old motorized kits uh, that may or may not have actually been 124 scale when it comes right down to it. Uh, those old uh, Nichimo and other kits like that. Scale wasn't exactly a big priority back then. It was more about the fact that it was motorized toys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. The cat just like slipped on the ground and almost unplugged my computer while he did it. So now that we make sure our cords are back in, uh, over to uh, Aoshima, who has two quote-unquote new kits this uh, month. Um, these are not really new, of course, if you know anything about Aoshima's kits, but these are the 25th anniversary uh, Honda Beat and Suzuki Cappuccino. Uh, the Honda Beat here, this is the first time the kit's been available uh, completely factory stock for quite a while. It's been available in the MS, uh, or the Mach RS, rather, uh, tuner series for basically for the last several years. Um, this kit comes with two sets of wheels. Um, you get the little base alloys here and a little bit more fancy a wheel. They do include decals for the seats because if you're looking at this picture, you notice the seats have quite the little jungle pattern to them there. Uh, they do include those decals to uh, sort of wrap the seats as it were. Um, it's, a, it's a neat little kit. I mean, if you're into little tiny Japanese convertibles, you can't go wrong with this. Uh, it has window masks for the first time. And there are a couple of little bits and pieces here that are, uh, you know, available i will say that this kit comes with a uh down top or a just a convertible boot it comes with a soft top and a hard top so you have three roof options or well two roof options and one down option and this of course is the suzuki cappuccino uh there's two sets of wheels to this you get those uh what are they seven spoke wheels that are on the box there and then a set of sort of uh, six spoke uh in a triangle three-spoke pattern, if you will, uh, wheels. I believe that might have been from the S uh, R series, S series, whatever the uh, little tuner series that Fujimi does. It's not specific to anything else. Uh, it comes with the race seats and the roll hoop from the uh, initial D kit, ground effects from the S series kit. Um, try to think. There's two different steering wheels in this, and this comes with <laughs> a convertible boot, a hard top, a targa top and a panel to make sort of like a t-top out of it so you have i believe every roofing option that the suzuki cappuccino has ever been tooled with as far as the aoshima kit goes so it's kind of a cool you know little thing the suzuki cappuccino factory stock version has not been available for 10 years maybe maybe more the initial d series has been out several times it just got reissued last year and we talked about it when it came out the only difference with the the only difference with it as far as what makes it the initial D series was a uh, bumper cover on the front bumper and the roll hoops for the back for the seats. Otherwise, it was the factory stock kit. So not available, but available, if you will. And then the one uh, genuinely new kit that has finally been released this week. If you uh, watch Facebook, you saw some people starting to pick this up as it was distributed through Hong Kong. Uh, probably directly through BMAX being that Macau is, you know, another um, part of China, just like Hong Kong is, so they probably just shipped it direct to Hong Kong and then it went out of Hobby Easy and places like that first. 
uh, going into Japan and elsewhere. It'll be distributed through uh, Aoshima. <coughs> this is, of course, the Group A Honda Civic EF3, the 1989 PIAA sponsorship. There are two sets of decals already for this uh, out of Auto Color. And then I believe SK Decals will be doing some sets for it, and it does not would not surprise me if Studio 27 does something for it. Um, they haven't really announced too many plans uh, for it as of yet, but Studio 27 seems to do decals for pretty much everything. So uh, do not be surprised if I tell you next month or the month after, hey, guys, there's some EF3 decals coming out of Studio 27. But like I said, there are two already out, already released sets from Auto Color, which is another Hong Kong-based uh a decal manufacturer, and then uh, the guys over at SK were like, hey, anybody getting those Civic EF3s? So I believe he's also going to be doing some sets. Uh, a separate, these are sold separately, but also for the EF3, is this uh, detail upset. Uh, this comes with some uh, decals there, I guess, for probably for the seats and other parts. I'm not really sure what they are. You get the seatbelt material and, of course, a big fret of photo etch. Not nearly as big as, say, the... Uh, Toyota uh, Celica rally car was. There's just not that much to a Civic to begin with, and then when you strip everything out of it and make a race car, there's probably, well, there's even less. So you get vents, and you get uh, disc brakes, and tow hooks, and wipers, and stuff like that, but there's not a whole heck of a lot else to it. Uh, and a lot of people were complaining about this kit because it has a separate hood and has inner fender well detail. But, hey, you know what? That gives you the opportunity to put whatever engine into it you want to. It is a curbside. There is not an engine to it. Uh, know that going in. Also, another thing about this kit that seems to puzzle people is that it comes with, obviously, four wheels. But they are two different sets of wheels. They are There's a front set of wheels, which are uh, molded in white. And then there's a back set of wheels that are molded in chrome. If you do your research and you do your looks online for EF3 Group A race cars, you will see that almost 99% of them, when they were running them as race cars, the chrome wheels go on the back and uh, they were basically painted whatever color they needed to be, but the the lip was always chrome. Uh, in this PIA car, the wheels were uh, colored like an argent uh, silver, but the lips were chrome. And this is the case with uh, both of the sets of decals. The ca They're doing a cabin set, and they're doing something else that I can't think of right now. Uh, as far as the auto color goes, and those cars are the same way. The wheels on the cabin car are black with a chrome uh, rear wheel. So, you know, when you're looking at it, make sure you put the wheels on the right uh, thing. I've already seen somebody building this with the wheels reversed, uh, you know, just because I guess they liked it that way, uh, which is fine. Hey, it's your model. Do whatever you want to with it, but it's wrong. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, know that going in. Uh, some people, like I said, were expecting four wheels to either all be chrome or all be something, and they were two different sets. They're they're uh, done in groups of two, like Hasegawa wheels are. If you have any Hasegawa kits, you know that the you know Hasegawa kits uh, wheels come in like little sprues of two wheels a piece. Um, they look. Uh, hang on for a second. Let me kill that. They look like this. If you get two wheels at a time, and you get just two sets of these, this is the way the Honda Civic wheels come too. Now. Uh, lastly, before we go, we got some Fujimi or Fujimi, we got some Aoshima reissues. Uh, this is the uh, initial D. Whoops, well that's Kit Knight Rider season one. Hang on, let me pause that. There we go. That's the initial D F3 uh, S RX7. This would be uh, Takahashi Ryosuke's ride here. You get engine parts with this, but it only comes with. Uh, Right-hand drive, so you cannot build the uh, American version of the car with this. This, of course, this will be the kit that gets uh, some parts added to it probably next month uh, to make the Initial D Battle Series car that will go be the tw the uh, sister car to the uh, R32 GTR that is also getting uh, some upgraded parts to it. So this kit coming out now, uh, we'll probably you know to run some plastic through the mold, so to speak. And then since it's already rolling, here's uh, Knight Rider Season 1. Uh, as well as Knight Rider Season 4. Both of those kits are out for the movie buffs. Uh, obviously a, a kit that is more expensive than the MPC kit, but it's also uh, probably more bot and more you know accurate in the sense of body proportions than the MPC kit, too. Those MPC kits were just made off of the annual kits. They were not specific to the movie, uh, the movie, the TV show. Also reissued this week, the Datsun Truck 720 Cal Look Lowrider. With these, you know, 
highly desirable, I guess, surfboard, as well as the Toyota Hilux double cab lift up, the jacked up 4x4 version of the uh, double cab Hilux. And then four wheel sets. These wheel sets were actually supposed to come out, uh, let's see here, in January. They ran a little late. And they are uh, the 19 inch sets of the Atavan RSDF, the Atavan Racing GT, the Racing Revolution Enki GTC 01 RRs, and then the Atavan RG3s. So, Atavan, 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 Enki. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, those are some pretty popular wheel sets that were just reissued last year. Actually, I got a set of them last year uh, when they came out. So, uh, you know, just restocking the shelves. It's what Oshima does all those reissues every month, and most of those things, like I said, are just replenishing stock at the uh, vendors. And that, guys, uh, I believe would be it. Uh, we've still got one round two kit that's out. Uh, we'll uh, let you guys know uh, <clears throat> when we get back from the show whether or not the uh, Mobius kits are out. Uh, there are some places on eBay that are pre-selling them, uh, or pre-selling them. Uh, there's also... I believe I saw at least one Mobius Ford 1970, the Model King, uh, actually for sale. I don't know if it was legitimately for sale because I, I was looking at it through my phone and my phone's YouTube or uh, phone's eBay app is acting up, so I couldn't really read the description. Uh, but if it's out, we'll let you know. Along with the 65 Belvedere, some places are saying March, some places said February the 9th. It's the 19th, so we should find out for sure. And then uh, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more Fujimi kits. And that's pretty much it for the month of February. So we should probably get everything out. Uh, anyway, uh, for the guys who actually are uh, diligent about the show and watch it, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And for everybody else, we'll see you on the other side.